You're listening to the Social You Podcast, sponsored by Social University. Be sure to follow us on our socials listed in the show notes. Now, let's dive in. I just went down the rabbit hole about dog health. Oh, gosh. (laughs) And blueberries can actually lengthen the life of your dog. They're very healthy for dogs. I'm Becky Johnson. And I'm Laura Black. And welcome to the Social You Podcast. So as we said last week, today we are going to talk about all the platforms and tell you our most favorite and least favorite thing about each one. And we're kind of excited because we kind of just want to complain today. You know that we're going to have a definite opinion on every single platform that we're on. I mean, there's just, we're in it up to our elbows every day. We can't always keep quiet about our likes and dislikes. (laughs) Uh, And if you've been listening for a hot minute, you probably already know some of the dislikes that we're going to share today. Maybe the likes will be surprising though. If we had a call-in radio show, we could be like, okay, well, the next caller, you tell us what we don't like, you know, (laughs) it'd be really funny. (laughs) I guess because it is the behemoth, we should start with Facebook. So what's your favorite thing about Facebook? Girl, you know, that's first on my list. Yeah. So my favorite thing, I don't know if it's my favorite thing, but some a feature that I really like about Facebook is the ability to have a group, a Facebook group, so that you can join together. You get all that junk off of the regular feed and you can have this private conversation. Like we have this neighborhood group that it's like the housewives of our little city in Texas. <laughs> And it's really kind of amusing, but I'm really glad that's in a group and it's not public everywhere. And Becky in Ohio is not reading what they said about our neighbor. And I don't know. It's just, and they're, of course, they're, they're super functional for businesses and church groups and clubs and any industry group, whatever you can think of it, it's functional for. And I really like that. I am going to agree with you there. I didn't even think about groups when I was making my list. But for my, I don't even live in a city. I live in a township outside of Columbus. But for my little township, mm-hmm. there's a group. For the small town vibe you get where I live and for how polite all the Midwesterners are in my town, you would never know it if you looked at this group. It is so political. Everybody's talking about who they hate on the council and how they're not doing anything. And, oh, it's just the worst. Right. I used to be a part of a retailer group in the downtown little Main Street USA area where I live. And wow, you talk about getting some inside scoop. That was quite interesting. (laughs) I'm kind of glad to not be on it anymore, but you got the skinny. My favorite thing about Facebook is that because I have been on it for so long, it's like a backup for my photos. Mm hmm. I put all all of my photos that won't just make everyone incredibly angry or that don't have identifying information about my children on them on Facebook so that if my computer dies and my phone dies and my hard drive breaks, mm-hmm. they're online forever. Well, absolutely. I had to use Facebook to come in clutch for a senior slideshow for a kid because I couldn't find all of my pictures and I knew they were posted. So it really helped we had a hard drive that kind of crashed and it's sitting in a closet. And I bet that's where they are, but, <laughs> but it, it really helps. So you got a point, you got a great point there. And I know that other people do this too, because we sometimes try to help people with Facebook recovery. Mm. And one of the biggest things I hear when people are trying to recover their personal pages is I'm going to lose all my pictures yes. because that's the only place that they have them. I would not recommend that being the only place you have them. Because if you have a personal account and it gets hacked and you lose access, um, you're probably not going to get it back. So make it your backup, not your primary location of your pictures if you do that. Yeah, good point. And there is so much of that going around right now. It's insane. Oh, yeah. Change your password, people. Just saying, here's your daily reminder to change it. Don't send anybody a code. Don't ever send anybody a code. You know, anything like that. Don't do those stupid games that are like, my name is this and my favorite color is this and my birthday is this and my, let's just give out all our personal. My credit card number is this. My social security number is this. Exactly. Well, what's something you like the least about Facebook? Two things. Number one is how political it is. Hmm. It's like where everybody feels like they can go and just air out all of their opinions. Yep. It's worse than all of the other social media platforms for that at least in my feeds Mm -hmm. where everybody is just so incredibly hateful to anybody that's not like them. And then the other thing 
And this is something that the people listening have definitely heard us talk about. And that is the lack of customer service support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if you get hacked, you're pretty much just done for because you're not getting it back because Facebook has zero customer support. If you have a business page, you have a little bit better chance just because they make more money off of you because you may have ad accounts or something like that. But the personal pages, absolutely not. Yeah, don't hold your breath. <laughs> you will be waiting a long time. And that's funny you say that because mine kind of goes along with that. My least favorite thing about Facebook is the level of difficulty it is to find anything on the business side. Everything changes all the time. If you're a new business owner and you're trying to do it yourself, if you're trying to get this done, it's so confusing. It changes on the daily. There's something I'm looking for in an account that I'm connected to. It's not one of our clients, but I'm connected to it personally. And I can't find what I need. And I should be able to find what I need. And it's just like this maze of redirects and all of that. And that's so not user friendly for a new business. Right. Like, why can't I just go to the thing I'm looking for? Why can't I just put it in a search bar and go there? Exactly. That really frustrates me. And I, I know that frustrates other people who are just trying to make their business succeed. And then if you have an agency and you're connected to more than one business page, it mm -hmm. just multiplies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what about Instagram? I like Instagram better than Facebook. So I feel mm -hmm. like I've got the hatefulness out of my system now. What is your favorite thing about Instagram? That was hard for me to decide what my favorite thing is. I just like it. Um, it's probably my overall favorite platform, although I do like LinkedIn. That shows my nerdy side for different things, clearly. But I like how concise it is. I like how you can flip through feeds and most of the posts are not super nuts. I mean, you may have a carousel here or there or a video here or there, but I like how it's almost simpler in a way. Reels get in there too, and you can go down that rabbit hole too. I don't know. I just feel like it's clearer than the rest, if that makes sense. Yeah, that is kind of what mine is. And I just put that it's the easiest one to scroll. Mm -hmm. Like if I just want to mindlessly scroll and mm -hmm. I don't want to hear anything. I just want to look at pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not like in the mood for videos. I can just scroll Instagram. Like you said, it is concise. I'm not having to read four paragraphs that somebody mm -hmm. wrote about their political stance. It's mm -hmm. like, here's a picture of my kid. Here's a picture of us on a date night. Here's our whatever doing whatever. And I like that. I like that it seems a little more personal and just mm -hmm. easier to look at. <laughs> yeah, totally agree there. Well, it's funny you say it's less political to me. What I see is more political. So that was really funny that you said that about Facebook. And I would agree that I'm tired of politics on Facebook, but it's more in my face on Instagram. And maybe that's because I look at it more on Instagram. So it just keeps feeding it to me. Some of that. And I like how you have to really look for the comments if you want to read them. And you can just skip that side of crazy argument, argumenting, arguing, not argumenting, <laughs> arguing. So I don't know. I thought that was funny. And I also don't like that you can't link to things in posts. Like, I'm glad you can in a story, but the link in bio is getting annoying. Do you remember how excited we were when you could finally link in stories and it wasn't just for famous people? You could finally put a link in a story. We were like, oh. and now it transfers to Facebook. It's funny you say that, that like maybe it's just more of what you look at because there's a comedian named Jaron Myers. He's the one that did the Chick-fil-A rap. He made a reel not long ago talking about all these people saying, I'm not going to get on there. It's just girls dancing in bikinis and all this. And he's like, it's an algorithm. It's an algorithm, bro. <laughs> like if that's what you're getting, it's right. an algorithm. <laughs> but when I get too many going and I'm like, okay, I'm so done with all this political junk. I'll go search for something else. And then that helps me. And then I get kind of out of it for a while. <laughs> and to be fair, if you are in the demographic that they think is most likely to want to see bikini videos, when you first get on there, that is what you're going to get. But if you make the choice to look for things that you want to see and like things that you actually are interested in, it picks up on it. Pretty much all of the scrolling ones like Instagram, TikTok, all of them will pick up on you like this. Let's show you more of this. So if your feed is looking kind of trashy, maybe you should pay attention <laughs> To what you're looking at. Maybe it's time to go searching for, you know, something. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
Oh my goodness. So my least favorite thing about Instagram, and it's not something that I actually don't like personally. It's my least favorite thing as a social media manager. Mm -hmm. And that's that there are so many posting options. You can do a static picture. You can do a whole carousel. You can do a reel. You can do a story. There's so many options. And when we're doing social media for somebody on Facebook, it's like, here's your posts you get every week. For Instagram, it's like, here's your posts. Here's your stories. Here's your reels. Here's mm -hmm. my firstborn child. Here's a lock of my hair. <laughs> here is a sample of my blood. Exactly. Like, it's just so much. It really is. And you have to kind of play the whole game, you know, and hit all those areas if you want to compete. And that's a lot. It's a lot to think about. It's a lot to do. And it changes all the time. Mm -hmm. What used to be best practices a year ago are not the best practices now. Yeah. And what were the best practices two years ago are not the same as they were one year ago. Mm -hmm. And what they are now is not the same as they'll be six months from now. Right. They're constantly changing. Like use three hashtags, use 30 hashtags, put the hashtags in the comments, put mm -hmm. them in the caption, do a carousel, do one image, do video. It's like... Mm -hmm. It changes every day. And it used to be super polished, make it look so good and super polished. And now it's like a little more raw is going to help you out more. And it's so hard to keep up with that. And I totally agree with you there. And that leads me to our next one, because Instagram, I feel like has an identity problem ever since TikTok came out, <laughs> yeah. that they want to be TikTok and they're not. Yep. But like, do you Instagram, just do you be yourself. People love you. So well, they sure are trying hard with those little highlight thingies. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know what you call them. Those little messages over your, um, no, well, not even threads, the little, um, you know, gosh, why do I not know the name of that? In your messages, you can put like that pin, the little note above your name. Do you read those? I don't read no, those. Absolutely not. Like that's a waste <laughs> of time. But anyway, I can't believe they are still here. I thought those would last a week. That's another thing that I really don't like about Instagram is that they put threads in the feed. Mm -hmm. It's not threads. It's Instagram. Threads is its own thing. Don't show me threads in my Instagram. And then it shows you like half of it because it wants you to click it. But I don't even have threads on my phone. So like, I'm not going to click it. It's just trashing up my feed. Yeah. Do you think threads is going to go anywhere? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Because people are just putting the same thing on there that they're putting everywhere else. So why even go there to see it? Because you know, they're putting it everywhere else. Well, and they came out of the gate so strong. I'm kind of like, mm. I don't see anything original on there. If I see it on there, it's already been posted on their Instagram and it's already been posted on their Facebook because they know nobody else is looking at it on thread. So they have to post it somewhere else. Right. They got to do that teaser. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted. We rabbit trailed. <laughs> TikTok. What's your favorite thing? So I was thinking about that and I don't TikTok. So Karen does enough of it for both of us. I don't know. TikTok's kind of fun, but I don't have much of an opinion. Sorry, so, that's not helpful. I'll let I mean, Karen take my TikTok time in a minute. It's fun. So that's, and that's fun. Yeah. My favorite thing about TikTok is unlike Facebook and Instagram that I do feel like are more polished, you get more authenticity on TikTok because a lot of times it's just people on there talking. Mm -hmm. And true. so you get to see how people really are. Mm -hmm. And also I just, I like dance videos and music, you know, but not in bikinis, just real dancing. So I have a throwdown challenge for the office for next week. They need to do the Barbara's Rhubarb Bar for us. I would love that. <laughs> That'd be so great. Nicole, Michaela, you're on. <laughs> Abracadabra. We want to see it. <laughs> now that's coming up in my Instagram feed because I searched it there You're and welcome. I keep getting these new versions, you know, since we talked about it a few weeks ago, that's kind of I'm fun. It is super say, catchy. James and Yasmin are still my favorite. They're the best and they do all the dances. So like not just the Barbara's Rhubarb Bar. So I love them. <laughs> so what's your least favorite thing about TikTok? I know you're not on there a lot. I'm never on there. So, so I'm your not least even favorite thing is just TikTok. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I just didn't need another platform. My clients aren't on TikTok. And yeah, I understand the concept. I've been on it before. I just stay with what I've got. It fits my bandwidth and I'm happy. My least favorite thing about TikTok is something that I think may be Karen's favorite thing about TikTok. And that is all the drama. There is so <laughs> much drama on TikTok. I'm going to talk about this person that made this cake and it was awful. Well, I'm the person that got the cake and it was blah, blah. There's so much drama. And I feel the way about drama, the way I feel about sad movies. I don't watch sad movies. I'm not into chick flicks. Uh -huh. I'm not into romantic comedies. Listen, there's enough sadness in this world that I don't need to watch it on TV. I don't want to cry. 
I want to watch action movies. And I feel that way about drama. Like there's enough drama in the world. I don't want to see your drama and I don't even know you. That's probably a reason why it just doesn't appeal to me. Keep your dirty laundry to yourself. But on the other side of that, there's also really supportive communities on there. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess what leads to the drama because people are trying to support their people. And a community for everything. Yes. Everything, literally. The next one is the one we jokingly refer to as the artist formerly known as Twitter. And that is X. What do you think? What do you like about it? The only thing I like about it, because this is the only thing I ever look at on there, is breaking news. You can get breaking news updates really fast Mm -hmm. on Twitter. X, whatever. You can get it really fast and find out what's going on before it's being carried on the other platforms. Mm Mm-hmm. What about yeah. you? I like that it's quick. You're limited. You don't have space to go on and on and on and on. <laughs> and I like that a lot. I'm not on it very much, just here and there. I've never really been a Twitter person, but I like how it's kind of brief and to the point and it's it's fast and it moves. And you will see some like people that. sometimes that will do like a tweet and it'll have like a one in front of it. And then they'll do number two because they want to use more letters than they get. And they're telling a whole story. If you mm-hmm. start your tweet with like, one, I'm not reading it. Exactly. Me neither. Nope. I'm not going to do I Too long. Didn't read. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Yeah. And I heard the other day they're going to take off the, is it the like button? Or they're going to hide something. I know that's a really minor thing, but it bugs me. Well, one of my things that I don't like about it is super minor. And that's just that we're calling it X now. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. But the other thing is that if you are scrolling through your feed, there are ads that look like tweets. And if you are looking at the comments on someone else's tweet, like if somebody tweets something and you go to look at the comments, there will be ads in that that look like they're going to be comments. And I don't want to have to be tricked into reading an ad. Yeah, it's annoying. Do not like. Totally agree. I wish you hadn't changed the name. I mean, the the URL is still the same for crying out loud. So my favorite platform is next, and that is YouTube. What is your favorite thing about YouTube? I guess I like that YouTube is fairly consistent. I use YouTube more as a research tool, background music. I probably use my TV more for YouTube than I do for anything else. I don't know. I just, it's pretty consistent. I know that's a lame answer, but I just think it's useful. I have two. Number one, I like that you can learn to do anything on YouTube. I can knit. I can unclog my toilet. I can cook things. Like there are so many things you can learn on YouTube. Uh Uh-huh. And then the other thing I like is because of the long form video, I can watch my murder shows. Oh, yeah. Murder documentaries without having to like go through Netflix and see if the season is on there. And besides like the regular murder shows that are on TV, then you have these people that do the murder shows where they're just telling you the story of what happened and they're literally just YouTubers. I still like that too. So I like, yeah. I like it for my murder docs. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm totally with you. Like when I say I use it for research, that's exactly, exactly. And to be clear, learn how to do anything. I am not a fan of murder. I am a fan of forensics and mysteries and how people solve these things and seeing these people that think they got away with it, be brought to justice. Mm-hmm. But just to get that out there, I'm not watching it because I like really like murder. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the kind of person that's like obsessed with the serial killers and thinks they're cool. I like to see them get caught. And I think the people that do the science to catch them are really cool. Well, it's solving a puzzle. So what's your least favorite thing? Uh, about YouTube? Mm-hmm. Right? It's perfect. Just kidding. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I thought about this a while ago and I really couldn't come up with a negative. I'm sure there are, but they have a pretty great platform set up and it's just so, so helpful. So resourceful. You can do the podcast. You can, you know, listen to podcasts. You can make the videos. You can look at shorts. You can do anything. And it's pretty user friendly. It's a little cumbersome to post things if you want to go through and answer all the questions and tag everything. And that's a little bit of a headache to me. But honestly, it helps. It gets your information where you want it. So it's worth it. I don't know. I don't have a lot of complaints about YouTube. And like we talked about the algorithm, this may be just because I do watch the murder shows. But my least favorite thing is that you can really find some disturbing content on YouTube. There are videos like 10 worst plane crashes caught on video. And literally, you're able to watch a plane full of people crash into the ground and explode. And I find that extremely disturbing. Like when I'm watching my murder doc shows, I don't want to see the person get murdered. I don't want to hear the person get murdered. I want to hear the story 
and see how they caught the person. But like there are videos where you can see people dying and I'm not, mm-mm. I'm not here for that. Like, I know that there is a fine line between freedom of speech and yeah. censorship, but I almost feel like you shouldn't be able to post someone's death on video to the internet. It yeah. seems disrespectful. Yeah, totally agree. In fact, I was kind of surprised that you said you can, you can see that. I haven't come across that. At least put the, like Instagram does, throw up the, this may be disturbing. Sometimes they do, but oh. not always. And I think and I did it because I watch a lot of the murder documentaries. And then I also am just fascinated with tornadoes. So I will watch storm chaser footage of tornadoes. Oh, me too. Yeah, me too. And I guess the algorithm is like, she likes murder and tornadoes. Let's show her death. Cool. But don't really want to see that. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if that was your child. Like if your child was on that plane, you wouldn't want everybody to just be able to watch that. And oh, like, no, not at all. And like joke about it and stuff. You yeah, know? that's a really private matter. Yeah. Hmm. What about Pinterest? You have skipped my favorite so far. We're, and I'm like, when saving, is she going to get to LinkedIn? We're saving the best for last. I knew that would be your favorite. So I put it at the end. <laughs> Dang it. She keeps skipping my favorite. That's funny. Sorry. I digress. My favorite thing about Pinterest is it is the equivalent of being able to make a vision board without glue and scissors. I can make vision boards for things that I like vacations. I want to go on clothes that I want to buy things that I think are funny. I can make all these boards and not have to actually do crafts. And I like that. Yeah, it's kind of like a. I love the visual aspect of Pinterest, and if if I'm stuck trying to create something, I like to craft things, and you know, or even if it's graphic things, it just it helps to have that visual stimulation, I guess, mm-hmm. or you know, it helps you brainstorm more, and that that's so helpful. And I love that it's like digital collections of everything, you know, yeah. so you're not like continually. Where did I screenshot that and put that? It's in, well, you you filed it in your folder on Pinterest and there it is. We used it today at a meeting that I was at uh, because we were sharing with several friends about an event that we're planning. And that's my third part that I really like about it is it's shareable. You can easily collectively work together and anybody can see it or not see it if you keep it private. I like that. Do you remember when it first came out and you had to request to be a part of it? And yeah. everybody was like waiting to get their acceptance letter to Hogwarts, basically. So they yeah. put on Pinterest and being really excited when you got your like, you have now been approved to be on Pinterest. Yes, I totally. Yeah, it was fun. It was like a <laughs> such a cool new thing when it came out. And honestly, there's not a whole lot like it, really. So it's unique. And whereas some of our other platforms, they have identity crises, I guess. Pinterest doesn't seem to. They know who they are. Yeah, they stay in their lane. I like that. And it's really good for moms, too. You were talking about crafts. Like, if you're looking for something to do with your kids for the summer, Mm -hmm. there's tons of stuff on Pinterest that I would have never thought of. New dinner ideas. Um, (laughs) Coloring pages. Yep. All kinds of anything you want to look for. Yeah. I will tell you my least favorite thing about it. That's that I forget about it for long periods of time. (laughs) Yeah. I'll just forget about it because it's not the easiest to scroll. Like you really need to go in with a plan for what you want to look at. If you just Mm -hmm. scroll, it's kind of not as great. And so I'll just go for three months where I'll forget Pinterest is even a thing. Mm -hmm. Me too. And then I'll go, oh yeah, let's do that. Well, I don't like, I guess the Pinterest version of clickbait. It's either clickbait or or you see this great picture and I click on it and there's a link and I click the link thinking I'm going to get more like it and it's a dead end to nowhere and that bugs me because yeah. I think I've been spoiled to the great posts that have so much information attached or like I'm looking for the perfect quote about the weather, you know, and I find all these great links and they link to 15 different quotes and that's helpful. And then mm-hmm. I search for something else and then there's nothing there and I get frustrated. That's okay. the poster, not Pinterest though. Now we are going to land on Laura's favorite. Woohoo! LinkedIn. <laughs> it's really not my favorite personal favorite, but it's my favorite <laughs> to work with, I think. So what is your favorite part of LinkedIn? So here's where I couldn't decide because like you have a f- couple of favorites for things. It's less junky to me. You know, you don't see all the crap that you see everywhere else. All that silliness. It is business oriented for the most part, although, you know, little things creep in here and there, but it's got its purpose. It's more business networking. Therefore, you lose some of the drama, a lot of the drama. You know, there are conversations and things, but not like TikTok and Instagram and 
Facebook. So, and then the other thing is to me, it's more consistent than some of the other platforms. It doesn't change at the drop of a hat. It does change. Like there was a recent edition of that new dashboard and that kind of threw me for a loop because I didn't know it was coming. I missed that afternoon special or whatever, <laughs> but, um, but it still was user friendly and it didn't throw me for a loop. And I like that. Yeah, I could list a lot more things I like about it, but that's two. I had the same thing under LinkedIn that you started with. And that is, you know, it's pretty drama free. Mm-hmm. You don't see a lot, if you're trying to get a job or trying to get people to use your business, you're not going to post a lot of drama. <laughs> on LinkedIn. Yeah. So I like that it's drama free mm-hmm. and it's very clean yeah. looking. So what's your least favorite thing? Probably my least favorite is that scheduling is awkward. I love that they gave us the ability to schedule posts ahead of time, but like getting back to see what's scheduled, you gotta gotta go through a new post and you gotta kind of work it work around to see it. Um, I just think that's awkward and they can work on that and make that a little better. You can also get around that by using like HubSpot or or other, you know, scheduling platforms that can help with that. But then they have problems as well. Like if you're using HubSpot, you can tag businesses within your HubSpot scheduling, but you can't tag people. So you still have to go back and tag the people and all of that. Nothing's perfect. But if I had to complain, I'd say, yeah, fix the scheduling. Otherwise, I like you, LinkedIn. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say my least favorite part is the unwanted DMs. Now, yeah. unlike the unwanted DMs you get on Facebook and Instagram that are more the inappropriate unwanted DMs, <laughs> it's these business DMs that you can tell they are not even looking at your profile. They have not read anything about your business. My profile literally says I'm a social media manager and my entire about talks about how I do social media. And then I'll get a DM from somebody that's like, do you need help with your social media? <laughs> and it's like, dude, not from you because you can't even read. No, do no, you I do even not. even look and see what I do? You can't just randomly <laughs> spam things out to people and expect them to be happy about it. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of them. We'd like you to join our master's program and blah, blah, blah. You know, if I'm ready for that, I'll look on my own. Thanks so much. Like, do you need help with this thing that you're not even related to in your industry in the least little bit? No, I do not. Thank you. I really don't. So Karen, I know you've been waiting. We want to hear your favorite and least favorite things. I'm here for it. You want me to go through them like you guys did? Sure. Okay. My least favorite thing is meta. AI. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate it with a, Your least favorite thing about the platform is the platform. <laughs> action of a thousand suns. And I am so over the meta AI search bar. Yes. I went to search for something recently. And instead of getting the page I wanted, it individually identified each of the words in the name of the page and gave me a bunch of weird crap about that. I'm like, nope. <laughs> close. Their customer service is terrible. And I understand that they have bigger things going on. There's, you know, terrorism and stuff. But maybe, maybe before you roll out a new program, like a subscription, hire some customer service people that can help you um, and make it easily accessible to the public. I'm just saying. And they do tend to overcomplicate things to the point of it's painful. They're making it harder than it should be. Mm -hmm. And that has to be by design. Has to be by design. I don't know if they're trying to make people feel stupid or feel like they're not doing it right. And that's why they're not succeeding. I I don't know why they do it like that. Also, that's the platform that has the biggest issue with hackers. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing is groups. So you can identify which kind of people based on their preferences, likes, dislikes, buying habits, location, so that you can go in and promote your business that way. I, I do like groups a lot. Like Laura said, it's a great way to kind of keep them all in one place. And I love the memory feature. I almost always love the memory feature. My mom posted a memory that came up from like eight years ago. It may be the worst picture I've ever taken ever. No. So she couldn't put, repost it fast enough. I'm like, thank you, Teresa. I saw that. It was really cute. I like oh, it. I made it. It's so bad. Instagram, they're like the little sister. They, they don't know what they want to be when they grow up. They mm-hmm. are so busy trying to imitate everybody else that they have no personality of their own. And it makes business super complicated. You can carousel, you can do reels, you can go live, you can do stories, you can make a post, you can do the, it's too much. It's too much. Somebody needs to give them the advice that you can't be all things to all people. You are not a taco. 
<laughs> exactly. Somebody has to not like you. Yeah. It is one of the more fun to me. The One of the things I like is scrolling. It's got a pretty decent algorithm. So if I'm like looking to kill time in a doctor's office, I normally, it's one of the my first ones because it's quiet because I can go through stationary instead of video and it's still kind of fun. And it's interesting to keep up with your personal friends because they'll post stuff on there too. TikTok is the best <laughs> of all of them. By far the best. Um, it has the best algorithm. All the trends start on TikTok. There's a trickle down theory, but it's got to start somewhere. And TikTok is where it starts. And it has the most variety like of kinds of video. If there's something breaking in the news, you will see the unedited version on TikTok. And you'll never see it. It'll never cross Instagram's doorway. So if you're wanting to get to the bottom of a story, if you want to find out what's happening with, you know, when France was having their uh, uprising and they closed the airport down, all that stuff was on TikTok. Couldn't find it anywhere else on any other platform. I think it is one of the most transparent, but the algorithm is by far the best. I think the only drawback is they're trying to get rid of it. Which is a pretty significant drawback. Pretty significant drawback. Twitter, is there good stuff about um, there? They have great breaking news. Mm -hmm. And... (laughs) Um, great breaking news. Great um, breaking news. It's a good listening app if you want to go find out what's happening somewhere else. But really and truly, it's so political. There's so many sports things. I'm like, it's not mine. Plus, you have to post 30 times a day to break into anything. Yeah, it's just, it's a lot. YouTube has probably one of the best search engines mm-hmm. because obviously it's owned by Google. It's got the greatest for how to's. I can find stuff on YouTube. It doesn't exist anywhere else. And one of my favorite examples of that, aside from the how-to, is like, I may have a pop media problem because I think in like movie quotes and song lyrics and TV references. And a good example, I was talking to Nicole yesterday and I started singing about, I could take it down and bend it, give me a noun. She's like, what, what is that? I said, schoolhouse rock, baby. <laughs> she said, I don't know. I'm like, hang on, YouTube. <laughs> Found it. Yeah. Very for our <laughs> weekly training, we're gonna watch Schoolhouse. Oh wow! Yeah. I'm like, you can find anything on there if you're looking for a very specific clip. 100. Why is the floor wet, Todd? It's always on YouTube. The worst thing about YouTube, YouTube pranksters have gotten way out of hand oh, to the yeah. point of negligence, and mm-hmm. there is too much adult content. Becky refers to violent adult content, I will refer to sexual adult content. It's oh, just wow. very good. Sometimes it's clips from R-rated movies. That doesn't mean I want my eight-year-olds see it. Right. Their answer, YouTube kids, but you still got to get your kid off the regular YouTube. Oh, my kid got around that in a hurry. Yeah. Oh, my kid yeah. uses YouTube kids and you still see like weird stuff on there. Really? Mm. Not as overt, but still like weird that you wouldn't want your kid to watch. It also has the most unfiltered trolls. Mm-hmm. If somebody's going to comment something negative, it's going to be on YouTube. And if they comment something negative on TikTok, your tribe will defend you. YouTube's not that way. Pinterest, I love Pinterest. I don't want to say it's only for moms or it's only for people who mm-hmm. are in decorating or wedding. It's very visual. It is the most visual. And I love being able to pin things. I love being able to have a central location for recipes or a central location for quotes or a central location for decor. I love that. I do think it is used less now because of all the other platforms that are competing for attention and it makes the algorithm less intuitive. And if you're scrolling and you find a pin and you miss it, it is gone, baby, gone. Mm-hmm. You're never getting it back. LinkedIn, again, I, I love LinkedIn. It's the best feature. It is by far the best for linear organic growth. If you follow the formula, success will come. It is the only social media platform that is not trying to milk you dry. You're not inundated with ads. You don't have to pay to play. I mean, yeah, they're all free, but Instagram and Facebook are trying to kill us with ads. Seriously. LinkedIn is one of the, I think one of the best about that. They are, however, the slowest to evolve. Welcome to 2024 scheduling post. Okay. Come on. We've been doing that on Facebook since the turn of the century feels like. So they're just the slowest to get on board. Everybody else will be doing it. And they're like, well, I guess we should give it a shot. (laughs) Okay. Like when they tried stories for five minutes. I was so glad they stopped that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I don't think there's an excessive amount of drama on TikTok. I do love stories. (laughs) They don't always have to be like drama stories. But like 
what I like customer service stories. I am now on the baking side of TikTok. I like those. I'm all over you the board. You said baking, but I heard bacon. Me too. I want to be on the bacon side. <laughs> oh, I like the baking part where they tell stories and make cakes. I love that. I went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I do this periodically. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So now I can tell you all the bad things about drinking raw milk. <laughs> oh, I went down this weird rabbit hole and watched a bunch of videos from a microbiologist about how dangerous it is. Oh, it's so delicious, though, I have to say. It is so dangerous for you. Do you know you can get tuberculosis in your bones? <laughs> I know that now because I saw it on a microphone. because TikTok said it. On TikTok, there is a whole rabbit hole of people washing really, really dirty rugs. Yes. With yes. pressure washers. I watched that on Instagram. That is oddly satisfying to me. Forget those people, the pressure washing people. It is one of the most comedic, creative of any platform. Some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen has been on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And it trickles down to Instagram and Facebook. So, Laura, you'll get it one day. Oh, I already got all that, girl. But if you want to know the rest of the diseases you can get from raw milk, I can tell you what they are. (laughs) We do not. (laughs) We do not live in fear here, okay? Last week, I went uh, down the what are the most dangerous lakes in the world it's weird right it's fascinating was lake Um, ontario on there because i'll be there in like a week and a half it was a spoiler alert it was not on there becky you were safe yay (laughs) this week in social media because this isn't what we're talking about but because the beavers are having a baby we're going to talk about weird unique creative whatever word you want to use celebrity baby names I don't even want to go back to the ones that are like people our age think about, like Rumor Willis or like Apple and Moses Martin. I'm thinking like the new generation. And the one that made me get on this rabbit hole is Trisha Paytas. Do y'all know who she is? She is a YouTuber slash influencer. She looks kind of like a Barbie. She does like makeup and stuff. She named her daughter Malibu Barbie. Oh. She just recently had another daughter that she has named Elvis. I think my IQ just dropped. (laughs) But at least Elvis is a name. Her first daughter is Malibu Barbie Paytas Hackman, like hyphenated last name. So the the baby's first name was Malibu and middle name was Barbie. Malibu Barbie. That's going to follow that poor girl around forever. I was just like, what? Like, I know the Barbie movie was cool and all, but what? (laughs) And here's the thing. I know that you are, like, famous for being famous and you're an influencer and you want people to talk about you, but at what cost? Your child is going to be named Malibu Barbie. What if she is very un-Malibu Barbie-like when she gets older and she's stuck with that dumb name? Not cool. Your name that you name your child determines a lot about their life for the rest of their life. And too many people are not taking the the adult version of their child into consideration when they name their baby. As a Karen, Karen would know this. Yes, she would. People don't consider me, because my name is spelled so differently, I don't get lumped into that crowd, which is a weird discernment to me, but yeah. I get lumped into the Beckys, because I am spelled like a Becky. Okay. (laughs) Beckys, Stacys, and Karens. Okay, Becky. All a little bit different, but... Oh, my God. <laughs> so the next one, I thought this one was kind of cute, but it also sounds like um, the Clampets, and that was Jessica Simpson named her daughter Birdie May. I'd take Birdie May over Apple. That's kind of cute, Birdie May. It's just old-fashioned. Well, well, listen, if Birdie May is BFF with Kate Winslet's child, Bear Blaze, they could have their own TV show. Bear oh Blaze is okay. I think it was cruel that, to name Northwest. Oh, yeah. Really wrong. It makes me think Southwest. And it's like, <laughs> it does. Bear line. Don't they always it. say that. And I'm like, oh, does he have the compass rose tattooed on him? I mean, like. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Shannon Sossaman. She was in a Knott's Tale. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. She has a child named Audio Science. Mm, okay. Okay. Well, that's Okay. <laughs> That's like something you take in school, audio science. I'm an audio science major. That kid's going to get a nickname later. And I mean, more power to it. Is audio science girl boy? That's a boy. It's terrible. Audio science. Mm. Still better than Apple. 
I don't know. I think I'd rather be Apple. Oh, yeah, maybe than audio science. Ashley Tisdale had a daughter, and I kind of like this one, Jupiter Iris. That's not too bad. Ira, any floral. She's out of this world. She yeah. is. Jupiter. <laughs> Lavender, Petunia, Daisy. Floral names are fine. Iris is Pagonia. fine. Begonia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, your girl, Begonia. That is terrible. Tony Braxton's son is named Denim. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to name my kid Leather next. She needs a whole set of those. There's I'm going to name my linen. <laughs> linen, a cashmere. <laughs> I don't even know how you pronounce this. I'm going to do my best. French model Tina Kunicki and her husband, actor Vincent Cassell from Black Swan. They named their daughter what looks like Amazon with I-E at the end of it. Amazoni? Amazoni? Hmm. I don't know. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's like Amazoni. Amazoni. Hmm. Gwen Stefani, second child, is named Zuma Nesta Rock with Gavin Rosdale. So I guess Zuma Nesta Rock Rosdale. Well, it's no worse than Dweezil Zappa. That's bad, too. Moon unit. Moon unit. Jupiter sounded better and better. <laughs> right? Jupiter's moving up the food Jupiter chain. Jupiter is cute. It just sounds like a hippie name. Like, yeah, it, it is kind of cute. Yeah. Jupiter Iris. Yeah, it all is. of these are not terrible. Bear Blaze is not the only bear on our list. Alicia St- Silverstone has a kid named Bear Blue. Hmm. So Bear Blaze and Bear Blue could be best friends. And that'll be we cool. had a kid at, in high school named Pepper War Eagle. I thought that was made had, up. I heard that when I was a kid. Had a girl named Bama. Wow. I I always thought that was like a made up thing because I heard Ooh. that. Pepper's oh. not so bad, I guess. Pepper Bama. makes me think of Annie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pepper's, Pepper's okay, but... War Eagle? I mean, I'm an Auburn grad, but really? War Eagle was the middle name, so that, yeah, there's but that. Really? I, Pepper makes me think about Modern Family. At least go with Aubie. <laughs> Their wedding coordinator was named Pepper. Okay, Zoe Deschanel oh, has no. a daughter named Elsie Otter. Elsie's not bad. Otter is terrible. Otter, yeah. Otter. Otter is the problem here, not Elsie. Yeah, Elsie's <laughs> sweet. Otter. And listen, she Otters is. are so cute. I love she Otters. She should just have a total series. Like, there should be a walrus and a penguin. and a Right? <laughs> Otters are cute animals, but bad name. Oh, uh, Jamie <laughs> Oliver. Oh. Oh. Jamie Oliver has a Tell child a named Petal Blossom Rainbow. That's not, I mean, I take Petal Blossom Rainbow. In addition to Petal, they have kids named Poppy Honey Rosie, Daisy Boo Pamela, Buddy Bear, and River Rocket Blue Dallas. Like, they sound high. Like, what <laughs> What in the world? It's like a children's show. This sounds like a children's show. These are like... I used, to, I used to think it was cruel to name babies old lady names. But, oh, I what I wouldn't give for old lady names compared to the oh, Dweezil right. Zappas of the 2024... Right. So Jason Lee has a son named Pilot Inspector. Inspector <laughs> with a K. Pilot oh. Inspector. Is he Inspector a, Pilots? Because that's what it sounds like. He's a comedian. Maybe he thinks he's being funny. That's not the time to be funny. Like <laughs> <laughs> he's like every elementary school teacher. Ever. That's not funny. <laughs> Pilot Inspector. It's just, no, it's not the time for funny. I'm sure you've heard this one. Nicholas Cage. Has a son named Kal-El from like Superman. He's a big fan. Well, I actually have a friend here in Ohio who has a son named that as well. How do you spell that? K-A-L dash E-L. And it's like, okay. that's okay. Superman's name when he's on Krypton. Yeah. Okay. Pete that's Wentz nice. and Ashley Simpson have a child named Bronx Mowgli. Ew. I think Bronx is kind of cute. Mowgli, everybody's going to think of the Jungle Book forever. Well, you know, I did. Yeah. Influencers, Rydell and Capron, Capron, Funk. I don't know how to say these people. Karen probably knows because she's on TikTok all the time. No, I say it's Funk anyway. And they have a child named Super Funk. (laughs) That one's kind of funny. Like if your last name is Funk. You're going to get made fun of no matter what. You might that as well be their funny. nickname, though. Come on. Right. God. Super Funk. They need to be like Christopher Funk or something. I don't know. <laughs> then they can be like, yeah, just call me Super. Yeah. Usain Bolt. Yeah. Everyone should see this coming. Thunderbolt. Olympia Lightning Bolt. There it is. <laughs> when you're like the fastest man, Lightning is not like really a weird name. So mm-hmm. 
No. I had a friend who had the last name Shower, spelled different, but in high school, and he always joked about naming his daughter Anita April. <laughs> <laughs> the last one that I'm going to say kind of fun, though. Jermaine Jackson. Mm-hmm. Jermaine Jackson has a child named Your Majesty. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Can okay. you imagine having to address that child? <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Your Majesty. <laughs> Maybe technical issues. I'm so broken. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like something to drink, Your Majesty? <laughs> this week's sip and social tea. Fortunately for us, is something we don't have to worry about as much. It happens sometimes with some of our clients, but generally this is something that happens for you if you are the in-house social media manager person for a business. And it says, when you've had a few days off and the finance manager gives the admin apprentice access to the brand Instagram account to let them, quote, try to build engagement. Get your grubby paws off my password. (laughs) Now, see, I'm going to give us a little shout out. One of the great things about using an agency is there is no vacation. If Laura goes on vacation, they don't just not have a manager for a week. Someone Mm -hmm. else in our company will do their management for that week. And every single account has a secondary. And Laura, because it's her account, will have created images and stuff before she leaves. But there will be someone that's monitoring, that's making sure things are going up when they're supposed to, that's making sure nothing responding. blows up. Yes. And so if you are the in-house person and you don't have a backup and there's not that person and you are gone for a few days and somebody, as Laura so eloquently put it, gets their little <laughs> grubby paws on it, they can ruin what you've been working on for months. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to sound territorial over another business's social media, but we are. Our name is on that. I want it to be as good as it can be. I don't want someone who's not qualified, who doesn't know the schedule or the plan to just randomly post stuff. Yeah, we put a lot of work into what we do and a lot of thought. And to have that wiped so quickly is just, it's kind of devastating. Yeah. Right. Even when we have clients that we post for and we post regularly and somebody that works there decides, oh, I want this to go up right now. So I'll just do it. I don't want to bother them. And then they throw up something that is not branded and it's like a terrible picture and the captions all over the place. And we're just like, why didn't you send that to us? We could do this. (laughs) Or it's a boomerang. (laughs) (laughs) And what's really funny about it's a boomerang is that the three of us on this podcast are well within our late 40s, early 50s. And we know better. (laughs) It's like, come on. They can't see us. They'll never know, Becky. Sometimes they can. Sometimes it's video. Uh, They know. They're not going to know. know. How would they know? They're going to know. They're going to (sighs) know. Becky, welcome to the dark side. Don't tell Becky all your secrets. She's going to tell. Social media hotline. I love you, Becky. I love you the most. Social media hotline. Okay. Okay. Your social media manager made a post. You wanted to go viral and it didn't. <laughs> That's not how that works. No. So the content's got to be good. And social media manager's not magic. They're not. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. You're going to keep trying. You keep posting. Be consistent. We'll try again. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> I love the fake sympathy. Oh, yeah. Good sound effects. You can make really great content. It can be perfect. You can post it at the perfect time, have it going to the perfect audience, and there is absolutely zero guarantee it will go viral. It is you so weird. The biggest crap load mm. of nothing that is terrible. <laughs> you can post a picture of an egg and it can go viral. So unpredictable. We, um, we did a short video where basically I'm slamming uh, Twitter because that's what I do. So it went, re- it did really well on TikTok and it did really well on Instagram. YouTube crickets. It's never the same. Our first viral video that had a million views for us personally, it was at like 900,000 something on TikTok. And on Instagram, it was at nine, nine, one less than 10. So yeah. There's just no accounting for it. Again, you know, this is a great opportunity for me to say repurpose your content. You should never know how it's going to do on another platform. It's one of those things where if you keep posting consistently 
and you put out good content, then when you do have something go viral and people go look at your page for the first time, then they're going to want to follow you because it's going to be more of the same instead of I'm just trying to create this one-off video to go viral so that I'll have all these followers. What are you going to do with those followers? You have to be consistent and create content every day and don't do it to be viral. Do it to be high quality and eventually it's bound to happen. Join us next week where we will be sharing the weirdest things we've learned from the internet. Thanks for listening to the Social You podcast sponsored by Social University. We'll see you next week.